Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 with Mr. Clausen. Today we're going to talk about basic probability and with this given video what I want to do is just look at some different types of probability. So we're going to look at experimental probability, we're going to look at theoretical probability, and then do a little bit more technical geometric probability example. So with that said, I'm going to get started here. So one of the main things that I want to talk about with probability, uh, mainly experimental probability, is looking at this idea where we can determine the probability of an event just from general experience, let's say. And so generally the nomenclature look, they use P for probability, and then they usually use some type of subscript or describe the event here. You know, it might be PA, PB, you know, we usually separate it in some way, especially when we get to a little bit more advanced applications of probability where we need to look at probability of multiple events and those type of things. And so that's what this is here for. But really, the main idea, I think, with experimental probability and something that I think is very relatable is it's just the ratio between the number of times an event occurs over the number of times that that event is tried. Okay, so when Aaron Rodgers was named Super Bowl MVP of Super Bowl uh, 45, he completed 29 of 39 passes for 309 yards. Now, there's a little bit of fluff information there, but uh, find the experimental probability of Aaron Rodgers completing a pass based on this data. Uh, and so, if we're looking at this, well, what is the event? The event in this case is the passes. And, or I should say, passes completed. And so you could pick a variable for that. I mean, that's how you're going to see in most textbooks and that type of thing. You know, in mathematics, we're going to typically use a variable to try to describe this. Um, but the simple idea here is, let's say, um, let's say P, C. So and we'll say C is for completions. All right. And so if we want to know the relative probability based on this number, you know, this is just a, you know, number of times the passes were completed. That was 29 completed passes. And the number of trials is the number, in this case, the attempts that the ball was thrown by Aaron Rodgers. And so this is 39. And all that probability gives you in the grand scheme of things is a relative percentage in which Aaron Rodgers completed passes. This would literally be a completion percentage. So what we'll use is 0.746, let's say, or sorry, 736, once you do a little bit of rounding. And if you wanted to switch that percentage, I mean, that would be pretty easy to do. But in terms of a relative probability, you know, if the probability of an event equals one, well, it's just, it's always going to happen. It's a 100% probability. You know, this tells you that this is a 73.6% probability in which Aaron Rodgers is going to complete a pass based on this set of experimental parameters or data that we have at our disposal. So that's what experimental probability is. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the idea of theoretical probability. So this is a little bit different. And so theoretical obviously just talks about based on what you have, this is the, this is the probability of a random event happening. Experimental is probably something you're going to use more often because if you're talking about things like, you know, touchdown passes or you know, if you're looking at, you know, any other situation where there are really too many variables to just um, narrow down into a specific class, experimental is going to be more applicable in a lot of situations. But theoretical probability, you know, if you're talking about the theoretical odds, whether you have um, a specific number that is rolled or whether your sibling is a boy or a girl or, you know, those are um, a little bit more specific, I mean, in terms of the application that you can use them for. So if you're talking about theoretical probability of getting a prime number when you roll a number cube, well, a number cube has all the numbers between 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
And so what we need to look at now is, you know, which of these numbers are prime numbers? And so we know 2 is a prime number, we know 3 is a prime number, 5 is a prime number, and so you have all, these are all of your outcomes. And so if we look at, you know, the probability of event A, they usually go N over M, that's just the general nomenclature that you have, you have a total amount of six outcomes. Now, don't forget that one is not a prime number, okay? So don't include that in your analysis. That's gonna give you a little bit different answer. Um, but then the sample space indicates the number of possibilities out of those outcomes that would make this true. So the prime numbers in this case are two, three, and five. You know, the only way you get these numbers is to multiply them by one and the number itself. And so you have a sample space of three in this case. Okay, so it takes a little bit of analysis and going through in digesting this, but we can take something as simple as like, you know, theoretical probabilities of an event like this, rewrite them as three over six, and then just say one half, or you could say 0 0.5, or you could say 50%. All these are the same thing. Um, you may need to pay attention to the question about what they're specifically asking you for, but I would say under most circumstances in math textbooks, they're gonna ask you for this type of format in particular, but it gives you some basic information. You know, um, what a board game that my family likes to play is called Settlers of Catan, and you know, you have two number die and you know, they actually put like the, the theoretical probability right on some of the pieces if you've ever played it. So you put like number tiles on like all these strategic resources. And then if you roll those numbers on the number cube, um, you know, you get to collect that resource. So obviously, if you have two number cubes or dice, you know, numbers like um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you know, are much more commonly rolled because there's a lot of probabilities in rolling those numbers. Although my wife gets frustrated because she, she never gets the eights whenever we play and I somehow pick all these strange numbers and still um, have some reasonable success doing that. But anyway, uh, but there is a little bit of a theoretical probability there, um, which I'll talk about a little later because I actually take into consideration multiple events um, when I'm playing those board games and there can be some success if you're combining some of those things. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But the main idea here is, is that if you're looking at the probability of a specific event, right, what are the possibilities of getting what you want divided by the total outcomes that are possible? And again, these are usually random situations. We're not talking about floater dice or like weighted dice or anything like that whenever we're looking at this situation because that's obviously cheating. So moving on to the last example. So this is a little bit tougher example, but I'm going to use the target below to find the probability of hitting the red region of the target. So right here. So not the center, not the outside, but the red region. Now I'm going to assume that you know, if you're playing darts, that you are not so awful that um, you're going to miss the target. Like, you know, let's just assume you have enough skill and you're standing close enough that, you know, you're, you're going to hit the target somewhere. You know, we have the gutter rails set up so you don't accidentally poke somebody's eye out as you're doing this. And so if we use the target below to find the probability of hitting a red region of the target, I guess we're specifying the target. So if let's say you throw a dart and you don't hit the target. We're not going to count it. Um... But, you know, if you're randomly just going to hit the target, what is the geometric probability that you're going to hit the red region? Okay. And so assuming the distance from each ring uh, is from each other is distance R. So what I'm saying here is that if I look at, you know, the distance from the center of the target to the ring that says 10, this is equal to R. You know, if we look from 10 to 9, this is also R. Uh, they say from 8 to 7, you know, that's saying this is also R. So if we look at the distance from like this all the way to this, for example, this is equal to 4R. Following me? Not. Rewind a little bit. If so, let's move forward. And so, you know, if we want to go and find this probability, 
of hitting this target, we have to use our knowledge of circles, you know, find the area of the entire circle. So in this case, you know, we're, we're looking at this and let's say we want to look at the entire circle. You know, this would be 6R and then look at what's the probability of hitting, you know, that red region of the target. And this is probably the harder one to calculate, which is why I picked this given example. So remember from your geometry days that the basic area of a circle is just simply equal to pi, the radius of your circle that you're looking at, squared. Okay, and so we're going to use this in addition to the idea of the area addition postulate to go and then find the general region of this target. So obviously we're taking a theoretical probability idea here. So, you know, we're going to, th we're going to think about this in PA and what we need to find is the area of the red region. And we need to divide that by the area of the entire target. So if you hit the target and you're just hoping to hit the broad side of a barn, you know, we're just going to look at the probability of hitting just the red region. So, and we can do that because we can look at area and, and, and relate that to a theoretical probability. So what I'm going to do here is if I want to find the theoretical or the problem, the area of just the big whole target, right? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, rings. And so the radius of the circle is 6r. Now it's okay that we have a variable here because we're, we know that all of these rings are equidistant to each other. And so we don't need to know the actual radius. You know, it could be an inch, it could be a foot, it could be a lot of different things, but we don't necessarily need to know it. And so if we want to find the area, okay, of the, let's go the entire target, let's go ET. Um, and if we want to find this, this is just simply P or sorry, pi times six R squared. That's going to be the whole target. So this is going to give you 36 pi um, R squared. And I'm going to leave it in this format for now, because one of the things that you're going to notice is that as we're adding and subtracting areas and we want to look at the area of the red region over the entire target, hey, guess what? It's going to have pi r squared in all those variables. And so by the time we get to the end, all this stuff is going to cancel out and it's just going to be a ratio of the main number in front. OK, so don't be like really swayed by this. You know, we're introducing a variable here, but it's a variable that's going to cancel out. And you know, if it doesn't cancel out, you know, in the real world, you're just going to be like, Oh, I guess I have to define that, you know, and that happens, right? It's, it's real life. You know, if you think that you can like plan your life, I mean, just look at, you know, uh, current situations, right. With like, um, COVID-19, like we probably thought we had everything laid out and then it's just like, no, we're going to throw a virus in here and we're going to change your plans. You know, it's pretty hard to predict the future. And so, um, and if you don't know what that is, you know, just Google COVID-19 and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, you know. Um, but if we are looking at this, this is now our total outcomes. You know, this is, this is the N value in your theoretical probability, which is your total number of outcomes based on the area here. So now let's find the area of the red region. So let's go area of the, I'm going to go RR for red region. Now this is going to be the area of the, um, of the entire target minus the area of the blue region minus the area of the yellow region. 
Now, I think maybe even an easier way to do this is I don't necessarily even need to go um, the entire triangle here. That actually might not be the most practical idea that's going to do an extra calculation. So I think maybe even an easier way to do this is that the sum of these things, uh, the blue region, the yellow region, um, probably an easier way to go about this is the idea where we're going to combine these two pieces right from the get-go. So if you subtract the blue region from the entire triangle, that's just the four R I listed here. So let's go area of the red region. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to say pi is equal to 4R squared. Okay, so this is this is the red and the yellow region, okay, which is what would be the entire triangle minus the blue region. Okay, so we're just subtracting 2R. Hopefully that's not too confusing thinking about that. And then we're going to subtract the area of the yellow region, which will be pi. There's two R's here. So it'll be 2r squared. And now we just do a little mathematical operations here. So 4 times 4 is 16. And again, I would really refrain from multiplying it and getting this crazy decimal. Because if you go 16 pi r squared, okay, 4 times 4 is 16, r times r is r squared. 2 times 2 is 4. So you'll get 4 pi r squared. These guys all match up. So if you go and you find the area of the red region, this is just going to be 12 pi r squared. So now if you want to know the probability, let's call this the probability of hitting the red region. I'm just going to use some variables here. This will just be the red region, which is 12 pi r squared, divided by the entire region, the total outcomes, 36 pi r squared. These guys will cancel out and you'll see that this just simplifies to one third or 0 0.33 or 33%. And so hopefully this gave you a idea of how to look at some of these circumstances, apply some, you know, probability and statistics tools, whether it's experimental or theoretical, and even how to look at some word problem examples. So with that said, let's do some math.